Hello everyone, my name is Mary Polanco. If you are new here, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And if you are returning, welcome back. So we have a lot to go over today in the way of alternative craft supplies. And this isn't my first video, I've done multiple. And so the very first thing I wanna do is sort of explain what I mean by alternative craft supplies. Now there are a lot of items out there that maybe hadn't originated with craft companies or in the crafting arena, but have been used as such. Uh, things like ink blending brushes um, and other items that have been pulled into and craft branded. And so when I say alternative craft supplies, this is an effort to look for those items that are great substitutions at a fraction of the cost and maybe even some items that we hadn't thought to use in the craft room that could be very useful. Okay, so the very first thing I want to mention is just like my Ultimate Craft Hacks video, I am going to include a download Excel that you can have for this video. I, like I said before, I've done multiple videos in this topic and instead of being redundant and going over all of them at one time, I'm actually going to include an Excel sheet that does that for you. But today I'm going to highlight and showcase a lot of the new things that I found. You can check out those other videos on my playlist uh, titled Money Savings Craft Videos. But if you want a compilation of all those things, you can grab that download and that'll be linked below in the description. It'll also be combined with the Hacks Excel. So you'll get both at the same time. And lastly, there are timestamps for this video in the description box. So if you are coming back to the video and you just wanna to jump to a particular product, you can find that down below. If you find this video useful, don't forget to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. I would love to have you here on a more semi-permanent basis. Okay, let's do this. First up, glitter cardstock. All right, we have a lot to go over, so let's jump right into the first thing, glitter cardstock. So this is not a, uh, quote unquote craft branded cardstock here. A uh, couple things to say about it. Number one, it does not shed the glitter off of it, which is fantastic and always in my book required when I'm gonna be using color uh, glitter cardstock. Uh, so that's the first test. Does it shed? No, it does not. It's not that flimsy type of cardstock. So I know if you've handled glitter cardstock before, you have some that sort of feels like a film on the back of it very flimsy, almost fabric-y. This is not that, it does have a cardstock backing to it, which is what's gonna help with die cuts. Now I showed you a very intricate die there. I use this to test all things. If it cuts with ease, then we are good. Bad news for this particular cardstock, it did not cut with ease. I did with a shim, it was able to get it through where I can kind of pull it apart, but it just was way too much work and it was stuck in pieces. This right here though, this is the Doris glitter cardstock, which I have confirmed by buying a whole new pack. It is still amazing. So still not a, I guess Doris is a craft brand, but maybe not the mainstream ones that a lot of us shop with. Um, however, they're still in business with this particular pack of glitter cardstock, and I would highly recommend it. The cost for the Doris glitter cardstock is so affordable, and you get so much of it. So highly recommend the Doris, not the first brand that I showed you. I do though, These, this is the first brand. It cuts nicely with die cuts that aren't so intricate and have to be pulled apart. So sentiment dies, background dies, using it for mats. So I do recommend it for that, but as far as price goes and uh, use of the entire, like all the different techniques, I say I vote Doris, okay? So that is sort of the winner of this particular topic here. Okay, let's move on into our next uh, bit of testing out some stuff. I looked on Amazon and I checked out the highest rated, how many uh, reviews with the highest rating. So these scissors had thousands of reviews and they got a really, really high rating. So I wanted to try them out and kind of compare them to my other scissors that I use. Now I use primarily the shears from Tim Holtz. This is like a nine inch shear. These other ones are about a seven inch shear from the top of it. I don't know how you measure your shears, but they're not as big. They don't have the rigid end. The kind of the Tim Holtz has sort of a ridge when you cut. These do not. Um, the Amazon brand is very, very sturdy and I really liked the feel of them. They felt that they cut really, really well. So I was impressed with that. Um, I also used them, I was cutting through, I'll show you in a minute, some cardboard and they cut beautifully also. 
Okay, so as of recording this video, there's about 41,000 views, reviews, excuse me, on these scissors and they, it has a five star rating. So definitely loved them. And they're 1234 for three of them. So you can have multiples, you can use them for different things. I'm showing you cutting up cardstock here with ease and that's glitter cardstock. Um, and then I'm gonna show you how they cut through cardboard. So how do they compare to the one pair that I have from Tim Holtz? I would say definitely worth the price because if you picked up Okay, so a two pack is 1044. So it just made sense to me to get a three pack because then I can put them in other parts of my house. Because I don't know about you, but scissors go missing. Like I had three pairs in our kitchen and gone. So anyway, this replenished. But here we go. I'm just cutting with ease through the cardboard. I like them. I think they're great. Uh, that's why they made the video cut. Although there are some misses. <laughs> in this video. This one is definitely a hit. I think they're uh, highly recommended. Okay, so let's move on to the next item, which, hey, speak of it, is one of the misses. Let's talk about the this right here. Now, this has an extremely high rating on Amazon, but I have to presume that they are not made by uh, paper crafters. When I say made, the reviews. I just don't have a feeling the reviews are left by paper crafters. Let me tell you why. Okay, a couple things. I do like that it has sort of the spring loaded blade. I think that's great because you can kind of move the paper around. But that's probably the only thing I really liked about it. And it's lightweight. It doesn't function very well for our needs in paper crafting. I can only measure um, up to three inches, I think it is, uh, three and a half inches for my cardstock, so that stinks. And then um, the way it opens is kind of weird and kind of weird to work, okay, not a big deal, but then I have no uh, measurements on the other side. It just, I didn't like it, but it got from 8,700 re reviews, it got like a 4.5, 4.6 star rating. So it made me question like, okay, well why? So I read through the reviews, anyway, if you just need a paper trimmer, to slice off the ends of your paper, this is a great trimmer for you. But keep in mind, it is a sliding trimmer, which means you're gonna have to replace blades too. So wanted to keep it in here because I was really intrigued by how lightweight it was, the reviews were so great, and the price. It was like $9.89 when I recorded this. So I had to check it out. So there you go, paper trimmer, not the greatest. There's better ones out there. Which by the way, I do have a video coming comparing a bunch. So check out that video if you are looking for a paper trimmer. All right, let's talk about the greatest uh, spray bottle I've ever owned. So I had one that was rainbow. You might've seen it in many of my videos, but I used it to its death. <laughs> so I had it for years and years and years and uh, I had to get a new one. So I got another one. Highly recommend because you can get this beautiful mist spray and you can get droplet sprays depending on how you pull the little handle on the water bottle. So very cool, I'm gonna show you that right now. So I just have a little mat here with some ink and I'm gonna show you the full spray and then I'm gonna show you if I just pull the spray bottle trigger just a little bit, I'm gonna get a lot more droplets. So uh, you can kind of see the different levels of spray that you're gonna get with it. So anyway, highly recommend this water bottle. I don't find it to be uh, too expensive. Uh, it, it, you know, it's kind of comparable to other craft branded ones, but I really like this one a lot and it holds more water than some of the craft branded ones. So that's why it's a win in my book. And oh, side note, I don't recommend using regular cardstock when you're doing a watercolor technique. That was purely for demo purposes. Okay, this looks like a great spot in the video to stop briefly and share a free download with you. Recently, I did a background class where we took all of our backgrounds and made them into finished projects. I know I'm not alone and I have a lot of fun doing it, but I don't always know what to do with the final product. In this class and with this download, you can access seven pages of ideas for you to finish off your cards. You'll also get access to the replay for that video if you'd like to follow along. The link to access the class and get that download is below in the description box. Okay, back to more important business. Moving on, let's talk about these little brushes. So these are actual bristle brushes I'm gonna be using for ink blending. They're smaller so that you can use them for more detailed work 
on your ink blending. And I have a couple different ones. I have the finger dauber ones, which I'm gonna show you in a minute, which are a little bit bigger. These are the smallest ones that I own. And I like this because I can sort of highlight my stencil. So if I only wanna use the stencils on different parts of the cardstock and not use them all at the same time with like a big brush, I do find it very useful for that. They worked very well, um, exactly as you would hope them to work. Uh, so I give them two thumbs up. I really like them and for the price, I thought they were great. Um, and I also wanted to show you sort of my Amazon uh, picks for all of my ink blending brushes. So I have all different kinds and here's the lot of them. So I have ones for oxide, one for dye ink. Then I have these big round ones, which I love the ergonomic feel of those. I think they do beautiful large backgrounds. And then I have the finger dauber ones as well. I got them in sort of the neutral color and the rainbow color. So big, huge fan. You can see the, the one I just showed you is a little bit smaller than the finger dauber one, but not by much. Uh, you can definitely use the finger dauber ones for detailed work as well. And then, like I said, I have these, uh, an oxide one I labeled and then a dye ink. So these are definitely hands down my favorite. I go to Amazon for my blending brushes all the time because I find them to be so much more affordable than the craft branded kind. They all work exactly the same. Okay, so let's move on to the next item. You may have seen this from some of your favorite crafty places. Uh, this is one of those jewel pickers. So this will put your embellishments onto your projects with ease. I've been using one for years now since I first uh, debuted it in a video. I don't even know how many years it's been since that first video, but it has gotten so much love. So you can see uh, the shape is a little different, but it's also been sort of worn down. It's time for a new tip for sure. So this comes with one base and then you have two replacement or the, the one tip and then the replacement tip, which is great. The price is so great for this and it's gonna last you a very long time. What's great about a wax jewel picker as opposed to other ones I've seen. Wax will pick up cardstock, so if you have little pieces of cardstock you're trying to put in places, it'll pick up jewels, sequins, those types of things. So pretty much anything because of the wax feature. I've had some that would not pick up cardstock, and so this is kind of uh, one that does it all. So highly, highly recommend this, and it's pretty too. Pink with jewels, you know, can't go wrong. Okay, let's move on to the next thing here. So. I'm going to show this up against um, the new craft branded glue press that's on the market. Uh, spoiler alert, I think it's great, but I also love to come up with or find alternative options. If those of you out there can't get it or don't like the price, this is a alternative for you. So I picked up these syringes and they're actually on Amazon are kind of labeled for crafts, which I thought was kind of cool. Uh, and it comes with this fine tipped end, so for glue, right? It's not a needle, it's actually like a glue tip. And so I'm gonna show you the way to use these that is gonna make it so easy for your hands when you're, if you have problems with squeezing the glue bottles, uh, it just makes it a lot easier. And I'm gonna show you what not to do. First of all, don't overfill it like I did at first. Uh, this was my very first time doing this, so I kind of kept in those mistakes so that we could talk about it. So the first thing you want to do is just put a little bit of glue in there. Okay, the next thing is have something like paper while you're pushing the, <laughs> the bottle and not over your work surface like I am and glue is dripping everywhere. That was definitely my mistake. But you can see here, I'm get, that's a little globby, that's a little thick. You don't have to go that thick. That's because the pressure of all the glue and me pushing it was the problem. Also, off to the side, it was dripping like crazy. So I'm like, what is going on? So I had to figure it out. I overfilled it for one, so I emptied out some of the glue. And then when you push the syringe to use it, you're going to then pull back the syringe to let that air come back out. I don't know if I'm saying any of these this term correctly, but you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. So I'm using it right here, and what you wanna do is I, I'm like, no, no, I'm just gonna put the pin right in it. No, 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 you have to pull the syringe back out, then put the pin in it, okay? So watch. So push the glue forward, this is what I'm gonna show you right now. Push the glue forward, then pull it back out, and that stops it from leaking then put your pin in it. Now make sure it's a stainless steel pin and you are good to go. And I also did one with this black pops of color. 
because I thought that would be kind of cool to have this really fine tip for some of my most used uh, glue, like uh, glitter glues or pops of color. So I thought that was kind of cool. So I wanted to try that out as well. And it's the same exact concept. You want to push it and then pull back that syringe, then put your pin in. Okay, so here I'm just showing you the different sizes that I can get with this syringe. I'm just putting dots all over this background so you can see it. This is basically for demo purposes. Um, although it is really cool when it's dry, it gives some really cool dimension. So you see I pulled that syringe back out. Okay, so let's take a look at that real quick and you can see all the different levels of thinness, smallness, <laughs> whatever. And I thought that was so neat. And you get a bunch to a box and they're really, really affordable. So I thought that was really, really cool. Now I'm gonna show you this is the next day. Cause I was like, well, let me see, does it dry up? Do you have issues? No, very next day, hardly any pressure whatsoever that I'm putting on this syringe. I'm serious, like there is no squeezing needed at all. Love that. I love that, especially when you're doing a lot of projects or you have hand issues that, you know, um, maybe arthritis and it's really hard for the glue bottles. So this was a huge win for me with price, with um, practicality. Loved it. I go back on and I, I am trying the black one again. So next day, I know you're probably like, Mary, you're wearing the same red sweater. How is it the next day? <laughs> Don't judge me. It's the holiday season and this is my favorite sweater. Okay, so I'm gonna go through and yep, came out with ease. So you do those steps and you are going to love these syringes. I promise you, they are really great for the craft room. You can do it with glaze, um, add really small details to certain things with your glaze. Uh, I have sky's the limit and I'm ready to use them for a lot more purposes too. Okay, so that one got two thumbs up. Let's move on to our next product. Next up, we are looking at vellum. So I took to Amazon and I got this Oplimio, Oplimio thick vellum. Uh, I wanted to try it out. I wanted to see the quality of it. It is definitely on the thicker side, but still very usable. I loved the feel. I don't really like super thin vellum. So I thought that was great. So the first thing I'm gonna try with this vellum, I cut it down here, is I'm gonna try to use some alcohol inks on it. I picked up isopropyl alcohol 99%. You can use that with your alcohol projects. You just, it's not recommended to use with the um, pearls, the if you have like the Ranger pearls, uh, because it's not a fixative. There's no fixative in it, so it is, you know, kind of rubs off. But if you're using regular alcohol inks, you're fine to use isopropyl alcohol. I get this question a lot, does it have to be 99%? I know Tiffany Solario, who is a genius at alcohol inks, she says, I believe she uses down to 91%, um, and so that you can use different brand, but I think it does matter under that number, so just keep that in mind. So I'm going to just really quickly have some fun with these alcohol inks. Now, I picked up some Amazon branded alcohol inks because, again, I wanted to find an alternative for you if you can't afford uh, like the name brand crafted products. And this set has 48 different colors, which I thought was a great, great starter set. It gives you a full range to play with to see if this is even a technique you want to spend more money on or to get additional supplies for. The blower tool I'm using is also a cheaper one from Amazon. Uh, you can see I'm putting together, you know, a look <laughs> with these alcohol inks. I wouldn't say it's the greatest, I'm still practicing, but I am able to do that all with alternative type products here. And that is really, again, going back to the theme of this video is to encourage you to not have to spend a ton of money, especially when you're starting out. Because the thing is, you fall into, even though your tastes may change over the years, you sort of fall into what you like, what brings you joy. Um, after you've been doing certain techniques, like different trying different things, and you sort of fall into it, I'd hate to see you waste a bunch of money on a bunch of different techniques, only to find out that they don't bring you joy in the first place. So that's why I really appreciate um, these products and I really love taking the time to do this kind of video for you. So this was a side note, I was just cleaning off my thing with some alcohol and if you have the, if you run into that same issue, alcohol 
isopropyl 99% cleans a lot of those solutions, those uh, surfaces. All right, let's see what else this vellum can do. We're going to heat emboss next. I went and used my anti-static powder tool on it to get it nice and powdery so that excess doesn't stick. You want to make sure you're doing that on acetate and vellum, also cardstock, but those first two are very important. I'm using my dauber here, which is embossing ink. It's sticky, and that's going to allow my embossing powder to stick well to it. So I'm using my stencil, and I'm going right through it. It's working beautifully. Okay, so once I get that stenciled on there, the next thing I'm going to do is take my embossing powder. Now, mind you, I have my heat tool heating up right now because vellum can tend to uh, warp if you keep the heat on it too long all at once. So you want to make sure it's nice and uh, warm for you and ready so that you can move it around uh, the paper, the vellum. Okay, so I start heating it from the back a little bit to kind of warm it up, and then I switch at the very end to the front just to get pieces that I might have missed. This is uh, a really great way to heat on vellum. Now, this vellum held up like a champ. I thought it looked great. It worked well. It really came out beautifully. And so another thumbs up for the vellum. So far, alcohol ink, uh, then, and then using it for a heat embossing. Other techniques are really going to be like layering or die cutting, things like that. So definitely highly recommend this product. Okay, so speaking of stenciling on things, uh, before we head into more fun with the alcohol inks that I'm showing you, let's talk about stenciling for a moment. I have an upcoming live stencil class on January 13th, 2024, where I am going to be showing you so many different ways to use your stencils. Stencils are definitely my favorite craft supply that I have because you can do so many things with them and they're a really great price point. So I put together this whole class. It will be live. Here are a couple of the highlights and I hope you can join. First off, you're going to get to select your own price. I know coming out of the holiday season, things can be a little bit strained, and I don't want that to prohibit anyone from joining this community of fun. You can select your price all the way down to $1. It's up to you. Whatever you can pay, I just want you to come. We are going to be going over multiple ways to use our stencils. I'm also going to be giving away $300 worth of prizes during the live. Now, you don't have to be live to be a winner. You just need to be a registered participant so that I have your contact information and we can get you your prize if you win. If you want more information on this class coming up on January 13th, you can click that link below and get registered. Now, if you're watching this video after January 13th, you can still have access to the free download that comes with the class, six pages of designs for stencils, and you can watch the replay if you like. So you can access that below as well. All right, let's get back into the video and into seeing what more of these alcohol inks can do. to see what else these uh, this alcohol ink can do real quick. So I pulled out a piece of poster board. I've talked about this a lot in videos. And as the sheet is going to have listed, that is not going to be all in this video because I didn't want to be too repetitive, particularly because I have other videos that showcase a lot of these products. So I tried to make these newer ones that you haven't seen, but you've probably heard me talk about poster board a lot because I think it's great. Poster board you can get from the Dollar Tree, you can get it from even CVS, Walmart, any place that sells like school supplies has it. I also have a link uh, for this one that's from Amazon, but you can get it locally. And I just cut it down into this A2 size here, and I'm practicing with my alcohol inks over it. So I wanted to just try out a couple more of these different alcohol colors. Again, the plug really is here for the poster board, but you can see I'm still using that cheaper blower tool, and I'm using the alcohol inks from Amazon on that. So I'm going to pull out next, um, I wanted to try this on these alcohol inks. Now they're the star of the show. I wanted to try them on some Yupo paper. Okay, so let's have a look at that. Now Yupo paper is the synthetic paper that the craft companies sell. And for 10 sheets, it's pretty expensive. I've seen it up to about $10. And they're five by seven sheets. And they're sort of like plasticky. They feel plasticky. Now they definitely have certain places in the craft room for certain kinds of crafters. I know they can wipe a little bit cleaner if you make a mistake and you want to start over. Uh, but for me, for what I use my alcohol backgrounds for, they, it is not worth the price for me. I did want to try the alcohol inks on it though to see if it was that drastic of a 
kind of look drastic of a difference. So that is the Yupo right there up in the right hand side. Love it. I think it's very pretty. This is poster board right here. And then I'm going to show you a couple other ones. This is poster board as well. And so with the right hand and the right technique, you can get that look on, uh, you don't need the expensive paper and that's poster board as well. So I was having a little fun with these alcohol inks. So far, I think they're great. And again, as far as the inks go, you're going to be able to get, that's the vellum piece. You're going to be able to get a lot to try out to practice. All right, let's move on to cardstock. So this is definitely a repetition. I know you've heard me talk about, probably, about the Accent Opaque. Um, a viewer a long time ago turned me on to this cardstock, and it is my absolute favorite cardstock. Now, the only thing I don't use this cardstock for is coloring with real brush pens. That's it. I can ink blend on it. I can color alcohol markers. I can die cut, and it's really affordable. Now I will tell you, I'm gonna put the links for you, but I want you to look uh, at different times because for example, right now, the 80 pound is much more expensive than the 100 pound. And I would recommend the 100 pound for everything. So you can see I have them labeled and I'm just showing you some, some techniques as I'm talking about it. But the 100 pound is by far my favorite. I can use it for the base and for the panel. It's not overly thick. It die cuts nicely. Um, I can color on it. So if I had to choose, that would be the one. Now, if the sales start going up on the 100 pound, I notice that the price tends to fluctuate. So I want you to keep, it, keep that in mind um, while you're looking. I also can spritz it very lightly with water and get a water reactive look on both of those. So I'm showing you that on the 80 pound and the 100 pound. And then I'm gonna show you on the, um, how they color with alcohol markers. So we're gonna go over that next. So there we go, we can get that look as well. So, so far, great card stock. It's probably the best that I've found and it is so much more affordable than some of the craft brands out there especially if you're using a lot of it. Like if you're making bulk cards or you sell your cards and you make a ton, like this is a really, really great option. Uh, but again, I want you to look out and compare the prices because they do change. I'm using Memento Tuxedo Black Ink because I'm gonna be doing some alcohol marker coloring on this and I'm just keeping this demo in here really quickly. But of course, with the timestamps below in the description, you can know where the next product showcase is going to be. So if you want to look at that. Now this is all on Accent Opaque. That's an example right there. And then I'm gonna show you um, another example here at the end. But this is my combination that I'm using from the Ohuhu markers. If you have Ohuhu, I have the 320 set. They are fantastic, but their markers do not match. You tell me, look at those four caps up there in the upper right hand corner. You tell me you could have picked those to be the match. <laughs> you can't. That's the only complaint I have about them. So I came up with a color blending chart where I have over a hundred blends and obviously the numbers and everything listed. So if you wanna pick that up, that'll be in my Etsy shop. You can click the link below. I sliced my price in half for that now uh, for both just the chart or if you want the bundle. So they are half price and they're gonna stay half price forever. So if you wanna check that out, it's below. I'm just showing you really quickly how well these uh, color blend for your alcohol markers. I'm a huge fan, I love them. Also, it does depend on what blends you're using, so that's another thing. And then this is another piece of accent opaque that I use to color her up. And I have another demo right here for you. So, love the markers. They are sort of a bonus tip for an, uh, not the Copic, they're not the Copic brand, they are a hoo-hoo, uh, but they're another bonus tip. I highly recommend them, they're awesome. All right, moving on to the uh, well-known uh, daubers, I guess they would be, sponge daubers, used for sort of stenciling techniques. They're, they feel like foam. Um, they feel just like makeup foam, not like the foam daubers that you like uh, Ranger has, it doesn't feel like that foam. It feels like makeup foam. I, there's just a two different feels. Hopefully you know what I'm talking about. So uh, someone told me that Lindsay the Frugal Crafter does this or showed this in a video where you take a uh, clip right here. This is a binder clip and you just hold the makeup sponge, which are really affordable. You could buy a huge pack of them. And now you have the same exact material and you have a little handle to use. So I'm going to show you just really quickly. I'm using some gouache. No rhyme or reason why I picked out the gouache. Probably because I haven't used it in a long time. 
And so I thought it was time to pull it out. So I'm gonna be doing three different colors here and I'm just gonna wet with gouache. Gouache is like, if you don't know, it's like a mix between acrylic and watercolor. And so you get the opacity of an acrylic, but the flexibility of a watercolor. So, and it also depends on how much water you add to it as well. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you using this with a stencil, I'm dabbing it on. Now for some reason, I actually depends on how intricate your stencil is, whether or not you could drag your dauber across your stencil. So you wanna be careful if you have a really intricate die, or excuse me, an intricate stencil. Um, but it worked out beautifully. So I'm gonna do it again, and I'm gonna use regular ink. Okay, so if you use your inks, um, I don't think you can wash these. If you can, comment below, but I don't think you can wash them to get them super, super clean, right? And that's okay, because if you have one for each color, you're gonna be fine. I, I believe you'll be fine with this. This is a really inexpensive way. Look, I didn't even change. <laughs> I didn't even bother changing it. I just went from blue to purple. To me, it was close enough. But it's a really inexpensive way to get some application over your stencils. So, huge fan of that, I think that's great. I am going to change for the next one, though, because I'm gonna be using pink. So what I do is I just flip it over. So the purple blue is on the other side, and now I'm gonna flip it over and get this uh, one side for the pink. So here we go. I'm also, pro tip, this is on the hacks list that I'm giving you as well, flip your stencil. So how it's lined up there, flip it over. And you're gonna get a whole new pattern, which is fantastic. Now you have two stencils in one. I'm gonna get a little smarter here though and actually hold down my card panel and my stencil because they were shifting on me. <laughs> so, so we're gonna do that. All right, and then I'm just gonna take my next color here in pink and I'm gonna do the exact same thing um, to, get my, to get the same look. So love it, I think this is great. And there are cheaper ways to get those daubers. Uh, you can get them cheaper in different places um, and that's fine. I just think that the one sold by the craft brand is a little bit out of my price range. Um, again, you know my mantra, you spend your money how you like to. But for me, I just find them a little too pricey. And so this was a great alternative, especially because I won't be doing it all the time. All right, we are moving right along into some acetate. Okay, so there's embossable acetate, which means you can heat emboss it. And then there's these transfer sheets that I got. They're like the old transparency film. Remember the old projectors in school where they would put the film on there and it would project on the wall? <laughs> yes, this is an option, okay? But guess what it's not an option for? Well, you could definitely make shaker cards with them. They're nice and sturdy for that. Uh, but we're gonna try to heat emboss on them. And spoiler alert, it's a no-go. It is a big, huge no-go for the heat embossing. They melt right up, and I'll show you. But like with like with the vellum, you want to put that powder tool on and make sure you are using the powder tool. I'm gonna stamp it with the sticky ink, then I'm gonna pour white embossing powder over it. I found this even with the stamp, even with the powder tool. Oh, goodness, did that stuff stick everywhere. And then right here, I'm off screen, probably because I knew the doom that was coming. But um, I'm trying to be gentle with it and see if I can just like move it around and, you know, no. Mm -mm. You see that? Did you check that? Let me show it to you again. <laughs> this time in slow motion. Oh boy. So this transparency film is not good for that. But if you're making a ton of shaker cards, highly recommend. And you don't want to heat emboss on them, you're good to go with that. So, all right, that's no good. Two thumbs down. Okay, but I do have... Uh, an option. Now this is a craft brand, but it's very affordable. And this is from scrapbook.com. And so I wanted to see if theirs was heat impossible because I find the Judikins that I, was it Judikins? It was the one I showed you right in the beginning. The smaller sheets, uh, they're not as cheap. So scrapbook.com, eight and a half by 11 sheets of their acetate, definitely affordable. And if this is going to heat emboss, then it is a win-win for me. The funny thing is, it wasn't that much thicker than the transparency film. So I don't know what any of this stuff is made of, but it didn't feel that much thicker. They felt very similar, right? Maybe a tiny bit thicker, right? So I'm gonna get the white embossing powder over it, and now I am very careful to move my heat tool around quite a bit 
not keep it in one place. I thought, oh man, but it had no indication that it was going to melt up like the last one did. None. So then I kind of got daring and held it there a little longer. And of course this is sped up, so you can't tell that. But I'm moving it around and I'm keeping it there. And it did not warp at all. It did not melt at all. It heat embossed. I was very, very happy to see that. So affordable, yes. And it heat embosses, yes. So very happy. I even, listen, I didn't even trust it. I was like, no, I'm gonna keep the heat on there now and see if it melts. So I did, and I, I sped this up, but I kept it on there for a long time and it did not melt. So yay, found one. I was happy with that. Looks good, came out very nice. Two thumbs up with a dance. All right, let's move on to the next one. So this right here on a live recently, I am so ashamed to admit this. I didn't know that these glitter markers left behind a glitter film. Like when you wipe on them, you touch it, glitter film. I don't know how I didn't know this. I think I was even telling people, no, no, they don't shed glitter. So somebody on the live asked me about it. How do I stop them from shedding? And I tried some solutions there on the live, but it didn't work out. Um, and so then I thought, well, I, I've seen Tiffany Solario set her projects with this particular product. So I'm gonna show you that in a second. So I dried these up really, really well. I took them, um, once they were dried, I did not touch them at all. I'll show you that in a minute. One gets sprayed and one does not. So I took the one panel outside, well ventilated area with this stuff right here, workable fixative. And this is to cover over your products or your projects. It's gonna help keep them set in. So pencils, um, you know, it says a couple things on there. So prevent smudging, so on and so forth. So I tried it, right? I took it out. Now this is the next day. And I have, again, on the left, I have my sprayed one. On the right, I have no spray. So let's take a look at what this does. Okay, so here's all that beautiful glitter. And here's my fingers. My fingers are clean. Okay, now I'm gonna wipe them down and up. And look at all that glitter that comes off, right? So not cool. <laughs> not cool. I don't like that. So let's see what happens. Now I have clean fingers again. All right, clean fingers. We're gonna go over to the other one. Oh, two sets. I have two sets of clean fingers. I guess this was really important for me to show you. All right, Mary, let's go. So now I'm gonna go over the sprayed one. Very minor. I know very much compared to the other one, very minor, okay? I was happy with it. It was a pass for me because I'm gonna go back to the non-sprayed one so you can see again how much comes off. There you go, now you have a quick comparison. Oof, not good. So highly recommend this fixative stuff. I think it's great. All right, we are moving into the last item of this video and I am so geeked out. So I love this tape dispenser. Now, truth be told, it's not that expensive, but I wanna look first at an alternative craft tape for my uh, craft room. This right here is from Spellbinders and I cannot say enough good things about this tape. I really do think it lives up to its name of the best craft, craft tape ever. Um, it's awesome. The reason I like it in my craft room is I can see through it and there is a place for that kind of tape. When I am doing bordering, I like to make sure that I'm getting an even border around. I can see through it. I just really like it. Also, it's low tack, so it's not gonna rip my surface. Great, great tape. So I decided to try my hand at the frog tape, which is painter's tape in the low tack, and I wanted to see if it did the same. So yes, I can see through it in the same exact fashion. It's a little bit thinner as far as width goes, um, but I'm pulling off first the craft tape on the right and now the frog tape on the left and they did the exact same thing. They did not tear my paper. They were very gentle and it worked beautifully. And so the price comparison of this is great, but I do have a little bit of a problem because I love my tape dispenser. So I'm gonna show you a fix for that in just a second. Before we get into that tape dispenser, I wanted to show you an alternative one here I picked up from Amazon. And the reason I picked it up purely aesthetic. I thought it was pretty. <laughs> I like the clear aspect of it. Although my white one goes very well with my craft room, I do like this one as well and I just wanted to show it to you. And this is some mint tape from scrapbook.com and it's more like a paper tape, um, almost like those sticky notes. So uh, there's a place for that as well because you can actually mask over that where you can't, I don't recommend masking over the yellow tape because it smears. So that was one 
dispenser. This dispenser though is the dispenser for all dispensers because it fits my big roll. So if you have the blue painter's tape, you have any kind of large tape like this, um, it's going to fit wonderfully. So I was very, very happy about that. As you can see from my two thumbs happy dance. <laughs> okay. But I hope you're sitting down because I can go one better. I thought, I think that something else might fit into this amazing tape dispenser. So I popped out that center and I grabbed my double-sided adhesive roll and I decided to try that. So I put this in there, I get it all situated, and once I push it down into its little dispenser there, I there's one little trick that you have to do and it works amazing. So I pulled out my double-sided adhesive and I pushed a tiny bit with my thumb to have it adhere a little to the edge. Watch, I'll do it again. So I just push it there and then it rips right off. Boom. Amazing. So now I have a dispenser for my double-sided adhesive too. It's the little things. All right, so that is the last alternative craft supply one to show you. All right, that's a wrap on this particular video. Before you go, I do wanna recap on just a few things. Be sure to download the full list of alternative craft supplies and hacks below. You're not gonna to wanna to miss that. Grab your seven page backgrounds PDF for helping to turn your backgrounds into finished projects. That will be below as well. Register for our stencil class coming up on January 13th if you can, or get access to it after the date if you're watching it later. And hit those like and subscribe buttons if you feel so inclined. I would love to have you join us here on this community if you are not already. And thank you to everyone who already is. I will see you in class coming up soon in the comments down below or in the next video. Bye-bye. If you like this video, I think you're gonna like these. I have lots of playlists in the way of product reviews, comparisons, money savings, and hacks. So check those out on screen.